Hi, I'm Eddie Broach. Welcome to this week's show. This week, I'll be taking you through the winds of change as I pursue the most sought after game animal on the North American continent, the whitetail deer. And as an added bonus, I'll be showing you my first ever wily coyote taken with a bow. So pull up a chair. Your ultimate outdoor experience begins now. Today's the opening day of the Indianapolis Urban Zone archery deer season. I'm excited and I'm looking forward to the hunt. Alright, this is my favorite tree. Shot a lot of deer out of this tree. Quite get set up. Let's go get out a little bit of HTS scent and let's get ready for the hunt. Okay, we've got a south wind. The wind is pushing into this big thicket over here in this bedding thicket. And what we're gonna do is just put out a bunch of uh, HTS doe urine. That's all I'm gonna do, just to kind of mask my scent and create a little scent bomb here. And we're just gonna spray it so that the wind, if you notice that, the wind is just taking it all the way back through there and it's attaching itself to all these different leaves and limbs. Okay, now let's put a bunch on the ground here on this primary trail. Follow me here. All down this trail. Okay, next we're gonna take a little whitetail gland and I'm gonna put, just put a little bit of whitetail gland here on the ground where I want that buck to stop. And we'll hang us a little scent wick put it right here on this branch right here like this. Let's just soak it down with HTS whitetail gland. Well, I was doing a little reading in the good book while I was sitting around waiting on a deer to arrive. I left off at Timothy 4-4 which reads, that all meat is good upon the receiving of thanksgiving. And suddenly, I heard a twig snap.
We've come a long way with the design of these new camera arms. When we first started out, all we had was a single camera arm with one knob that controlled the movement. Now they come with a fluid head, remote zoom, record on and off button, all to make your hunting experience and self-filming easier and more successful. Well, just as I was ready to draw my bow back, I shifted my weight on the stand just a little bit and it made a slight noise. Well, that buck's ears honed in like radar and he looked up at me, noticed me in the stand and took off running. But I'm here to tell you, if you're not a believer in HTS white-tailed deer sense, you're missing out. If that doesn't prove it, nothing will, okay? He came right to my setup. Well, I'll be honest with you. I was a little disappointed I didn't get a chance to shoot this buck. As I sat there, I started remembering a hunt that happened just a couple years back that was very successful in this exact same spot using the exact same lure, Hoosier Trap Supplies Whitetail Gland. Now let's take a look at that hunt right now. After choosing my stand location, I went in the evening before the hunt and laid a line of HTS Whitetail Gland lure down on a primary trail. It wasn't long after being up in my stand that I spotted a nice buck. Well, here it was, the moment of truth. The biggest buck of my life was walking right down the primary trail, offering me a broadside shot. And what do I do? I draw back and I stick a sapling. Now, to my surprise, that buck's nose just stuck to the ground. He never even paid attention to the shot or to the sounds that it made when it hit that sapling. So guess what? I didn't hesitate at all. I got another arrow out. I drew back. I let it fly. And this time, the arrow met its mark. one of the biggest bucks I've ever shot at in my life. There's one of the ascent wicks that I set up here by my stand and I doctored it up with HTS whitetail gland. And that's what brought that buck in this morning. I made a big trail back here behind the uh, fence line there, a big arch and uh, doctored it with HTS white tail gland and he followed it like a bloodhound offering me the shot about right there behind that big tree so he should be down okay that is where I shot him right. oh there's some good blood right there looks like I ought to be able to follow him no problem there he is right there alright well he's big I'm gonna have to get some backup on this one well, biggest buck of my life here. Probably a solid four and a half, maybe a five-year-old deer. Probably field dressed about 275, close to 300 pounds. Uh, HTS whitetail gland brought him right to me. Just like a beagle on a rabbit trail. Welcome back. You've been watching Ultimate Outdoors, where this week I've been using Hoosier Trap Supply scent products to lure whitetails into bow range. But now here to tell you more about Hoosier Trapper Supply products is Charlie Mayshack, owner and operator of Hoosier Trapper Supply. Hi, my name is Charlie Mayshack with Hoosier Trapper Supply. We're the producers of Hoosier Trapper Supply deer scents and deer urine, uh, known as HTS scents. What sets us apart from all the other lure, uh, deer lure, uh, deer urine producers out there uh, are basically just the quantities that we offer. We offer a four ounce bottle, an eight ounce bottle, a 16 ounce bottle, half gallon or a gallon. Uh, for instance, you can buy a, a, a 16 ounce bottle of dough and heat for $18.95. So we're uh, giving you the quantity uh, to make a difference at a reasonable price. We offer a standard dough urine for early season. It's a fear eliminator, calms the deer down when they come into your stand. We offer a, uh, just a regular buck yarn for the same time of year. Basically, uh, same thing, just kind of calms the deer down, shouldn't spook anything at all. 
when you start to see scrapes in the fall and you want to consider using uh, a dominant buck urine with tarsal gland, uh, you want to use it in existing scrapes or mock scrapes as a territorial infringement lure. Uh, it's basically just to make the biggest big buck in the area mad. At times, it may scare or make nervous the smaller bucks. Then we offer a doughing heat, which uh, really about the same time when you start seeing the scrapes is when you want to use this. Uh, the bucks are starting to think about the does, and you can use this clear through the uh, pre-rut rut and uh, as the rut winds down. Uh, this would be effective on, on the bucks. For, the, for really the entire season, uh, when they're not in the rut, during the rut, and after the rut, late in the season, we offer a whitetail gland lure. It's a curiosity attractant, and uh, basically, uh, they will check it out. They both bucks and does like it. Doesn't make anything nervous, and uh, quite effective uh, the entire season. Two weeks later, I was back on stand, waiting on daylight in anticipation of the morning sun. My trophy hunt soon turned into a colon operation as a couple of does headed in my direction. Too bad for early season. I'll take an early season doe any day. I came in this morning, I put down a little bit of HTS uh, doe urine just to cover my tracks down the little primary trail there and then backtracked a little bit towards my stand. And the wind this morning was working towards uh, where those does came from. They smelled it and they came in to investigate. Yeah, the first shot I was so cold. This was very nippy this morning. My muscles kind of gave out at the last second when I pulled back and I shot over the top of her. But, you know, out of curiosity, she just turned around and put her nose back down on the scent trail and followed it right back and offered me a second shot. And that's all it took. Uh, seemed to be a pretty good shot, so we're going to uh, give her about a half an hour and then we'll go, uh, uh, go and track her. All right, wish me luck. Uh, for those of you that are wondering how, we f how I'm filming this by myself, it's called a Manfrotto friction arm. Okay, it's just a little tiny little mechanical arm that enables me to, to film by myself. I don't like uh, noisy cameramen up in my stand moving around and it's cost me a lot of deer in my, in my lifetime. So it's difficult and challenging, but it beats having a noisy cameraman in the tree with you all the time. All right, I'm going to get her uh, uh, dressed out there and tagged up and to the check-in station, all right? It's a tradition of mine to celebrate each successful hunt by bringing my game home and preparing butterfly backstrap on the grill. Okay, from field to the table, we've got uh, some venison backstrap here all sauteed up and ready to go. If you take a look at that, we're gonna throw it on the grill here in just a minute. And we've also got, if you come over here and take a look, we've got uh, some fried potatoes in that skillet and also some spinach so uh, we're looking forward to a really nice wild game feast all right let's go put it on the grill and we're just gonna coat the grill top there with some olive oil that way it won't uh, stick to the meat or the meat won't stick to the uh, grill I mean just a little coating a little glazing there 
And remember not to cook venison too long, okay? It cooks pretty quick. You don't want to cook it too long or it'll dry it out. Thank you, Father, for this meal that you have placed before me today. And I thank you for the entire experience, Father, from field to the table. And I ask that you bless this food in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, folks, hunting isn't just a sport. It's a lifestyle. Now be sure to stay with us. We'll be right back for another hunt. Well, it's now late October, and I found myself climbing back up into another deer stand looking to take another whitetail with a bow. I was expecting to see whitetails on my hunt today, but I couldn't believe my eyes as I began to focus on what appeared to be a wily coyote sitting by himself out in the open field. I didn't have a predator to call, so I had to do the best I could on my own. And to my surprise, my wounded rabbit call was working, as I was soon to get a shot off. That's the most fun I've had bow hunting in a long time. I called him in. After I'd climbed down to get my arrows, I'd headed back up into my stand, and within seconds I had heard footsteps crunching through the leaves behind me. When I turned around and positioned the camera, out popped a little rabbit, and then my heart began to pound as if I knew what was coming next. Before the break, I had called in a nice coyote and was just about to get a shot off. I'd like to uh, stay here and deer hunt. I know I shot that coyote perfectly placed, and I don't want to. I don't want it to get dark before I start the tracking job because I really want this coyote. I've always wanted a coyote with a bow, and I finally got him. Man, called him in twice, missed two different shots at 25 yards, then finally I pulled it back at 15 yards, right behind the shoulder. Man, he came back out and was following this little rabbit had come out. And then the rabbit had followed the edge of the, the uh, corn and popped back in right here by my stand. And that coyote was trailing that rabbit and he popped out. And he followed that rabbit scent all the way right here. Offered me a broadside 15 yarder, man, never saw it coming. I wanna make sure I get him, so we're getting down. Let's go get him. All right, guys, I uh, had to call in some backup because it got dark on me really quick. So I called in my good friend Jeff Howard, known as Scrumpy, HGS Pro Team member, to come out here and help me track this animal because this is truly a once in a lifetime opportunity for me. I've never shot a coyote with a bow before. I'm very excited. We picked up the blood trail. It's a little, little sparse. You know, he ran probably 30, 30 miles an hour through the corn here. So we're just picking up bits and pieces. But uh, I know I hit him perfectly. I already reviewed the footage. So I'm sure we'll find him, all right? Let's just uh, keep tracking this way. There he is! <laughs> yeah, 
Oh my gosh, he's beautiful. Check him out, man. Check him out, guys. Oh, an incredible, look at that exit shot, too. My first coyote with a bow. Look at that, beautiful animal. Oh, man. Man, I'm pretty excited, guys. I've always wanted to shoot a coyote with a bow. Never had the opportunity. Tonight was my night. I called him in three different times. You know, missed him twice at 25 yards, but I decided, well, if I call him in twice, maybe it'll work a third time. So I, I chirped a little bit more, you know, just made a little natural wounded rabbit call. I did a, a, a bark and a howl, and then I heard wood uh, footsteps going through the little woodlot behind me, and I figured it was probably him. Turned the camera around, positioned it down the edge of the, of the corn, Sure enough, he popped right out. I turned the camera on, everything worked perfect. And when you're filming by yourself, everything's gotta work perfect. So I hit the record button, he came out, I drew back, I let him have it. My first coyote with a bow, there you have it. Well, I'd like to take this time to thank you for allowing me to share that experience with you. You've been watching Ultimate Outdoors with Eddie Brochin. We'll see you next week.